sending Esuman centre ring. In the event of a knockdown, the fighter standing will go to the furthest neutral corner and stay there. Protect yourself at all times, touch gloves. Echo a lot bigger physically. Five foot ten against five foot seven and a half. Peno's first fight against Conor Ben was back in December 2017. Ben, who's due to challenge Chris Jenkins for the British and Commonwealth titles, and Esuman says that if he can come through this, then those are the men he's looking for, and the man he particularly wants is Conor Ben, and Esuman's wily old manager and promoter or former promoter, now manager Jimmy Gill, who's been around for donkey's years, says that again and again he's offered Connor Ben the fight. Connor won't like hearing it, but Jimmy Gill says that he bottled it. Well, Richie well, raising an eyebrow. Yeah, well, I don't, I, I don't think uh, there is a Ben is that, uh, that would bottle it, to be quite honest. No, I don't, so. I, I don't think so. I think it's, I think it's just would. talk, isn't it? But yeah. Is. But it would be a cracking fight, there's no doubt about it. And uh, tonight, Esselman's got a chance to maybe go one better and perform better uh, than Ben did. Ben obviously sorted Peno out in, in the second contest. Yeah, well, clearly, he, yeah, didn't he? beat him comfortably. But the first one, yeah, he had a few problems in the opening round. Um, and so we know that Peno is dangerous early. But here at the moment, Esselman started strong on that front foot. You see him planting his feet straight away and trying to dig in hurtful body shots. New Sainsbury, un new signing under the Queensbury banner, Esselman. First time in front of the BT cameras tonight. Last time out, he had a majority points decision against Tyrone Nurse, who can be a bit of a handful. That was his first defence of that English title. Last time out, I beg your pardon, he actually beat... Uh, Northampton's Curtis Felix in eight rounds. That was his last outing in uh, November last year. Yeah, I think that the, the win against Tyro Nurse is probably the best win on his record, to be quite honest, John. Uh, they can make uh, anybody look bad, can't yeah, he, Tyro? Yeah. Tyro's a good boxer, so that's a good win for Esselman. And um, I've trained Esselman anyway on the GB squad, and all about him. His strength is mainly his engine. He's very fit indeed, he'll just keep going. Said he didn't think the GB style really suited him, he likes to think of himself as a pressure, well, a pressure fighter. Well, he was always a pressure fighter, but with, with amateur boxing, obviously there's only three rounds, and a boxer who keep, keep predominantly coming forward, closing the gap all the time on that front foot, just gets caught too, too often against a good moving boxer, and, you know, it's always best to try and vary your, your footwork a little bit in and out, especially in the amateur game. And he was a decent amateur. We, we went away to several multi-nation tournaments and brought back medals. But he just got picked off against the, the very best fighters. But he's been in with Cubans. He's been in with a, a very good Moroccan boxer, Mohamed Rabi, who was world champion in 2015. He went five rounds with him in WSB. So he's been in with quality and class opponents. Not a bad opening round for Esselman, who's uh, had the better of that one, although Peno finishing as the aggressor. Canary pods beat the mud. Just one pod? Enjoy the brilliant clean of aerial all-in-one pods. Do you pod? Always pod safely and keep away from children. Welcome back to your call, Eku Esselman. For me, having the better of that opening round against Cedric Payno, would you agree, Richie? Yeah, I thought he did the better work. Working well to the body here. I thought on the other occasion, Payno just shows that he's dangerous, especially with that left hook on the inside, but 1-0 to Esselman. Ten round of this for the vacant IBF European belt. Fight made it well to wait. So, if you're watching, John, the, the, the way they're actually boxing now with Esselman, working well downstairs, but you've just got to watch it in the clinches here. You watch Payno, he, he delivers a left hook occasionally, so Payno, sorry, Esselman's got to keep that right hand of his nice and high, especially when they're in close. Get that shot 
that right hand back to the on guard position because there's that little left up there you see that comes comes around the corner but in the clinches I swear Pino is going to be dangerous with that left hand. Bob Williams refereeing this one but three English judges sitting ringside doing the scoring for the IBF lives in West Bridgeford nowadays Essaman which is one of the nicer corners of Nottingham hoping that he's going to follow in a list of good welterweights from that city including Wally Swift, Wally Swift senior Kirkland Lang Del Bryan there was Jawed Kalik there's been a few yeah good fighting city for welterweights definitely mm. a fighting city for super middle as well Carl Frotch Indeed. Reach advantage for Essendon. Uh, need to have watched us regularly to know that I'm sure Richie would like to see Essendon establishing a dominance behind that left hand lead. Yeah, again, probably a situation where Payno would, would prefer it up close and just to rough it up a little bit. Essendon tends to do his better work at range. Just got to keep his balance a little bit more. Essendon can switch it, as he says right on cue there, switching to Southpaw and trying to deliver a big left hand. He is a former kickboxer, Cedric Payno. Doesn't speak great English. I tell you what he does though, John, he's just making the odd mistake here, Payno. When, he when he's boxing as an orthodox, occasionally he throws his right hand and brings his left, so his right leg through, and then he changes then to, ortho to an orthodox and comes very square. There's that left hook we spoke about earlier, that's the shot. He's got to watch out for it. You often see that former kickboxers do have a tendency to get squared up. Square, well, they, that's it. And what, they, what they do is, well, not the kickboxers, they change stances, you see. They go from orthodox to southpaw, because obviously the kicking's involved. But when you come square is when you're open. Well, the pattern continuing at range, Esteban getting the better of it up close. Peno, as we anticipated, showing that he's a handful. Life has been anything but normal this year. You might feel OK being outside. Or maybe you still feel safer being at home. Or maybe you feel it's time to buy a new one. However you feel about the future, we're the people here to help. Halifax, it's a people thing. <laughs> Welcome back to your call. Here's the face of the Frenchman, Cédric Peno, former European, IBF European belt holder, looking to win it again against Nottingham's Echo Esserman. First round he gave to Esserman, likewise the second. Yeah, I thought Esserman did the better work during the second round. Just glimpses of danger from Peno. He's in close. He's looking particularly for me. Punch I like from him. That's some good wins as an amateur, Essendon, going back in the ABAs back in 2012. Research revealed that he had a win against Tommy Langford. 2014 in the elites and his way to the final beat Lewis Ritson and Ted Cheeseman. Good, good wins, names, yeah, good names. Good names, good wins. Ted GB, he was involved in some cracking spars with boxers like Josh Kelly and Scott, and Scott Fitzgerald, a very good boxer indeed. Some cracking spars. Blooded the nose one way or another here of Peno. Presumably by punches rather than clash of heads, although there have been one or two untidy exchanges up close. Vas-y, 
you know, needs some big shots, needs to win around. There's a decent left hand, but he needs more. Oh, good shot. Well, he got caught with the right hand there on the switch again. As he's switching legs, his feet come square and he gets caught on the switch. Typical example there, we can pull that out um, in, re in replays. But the right hand there from Essman hits the target because Payno's legs come square. Look, square again. Every time he throws that right hand, see, the, the right leg seems to come through. And that's why he ends up sometimes as, as a southpaw, but it's a fault, John, that is. You can't get away with those type of mistakes. He's the smaller man and actually fights small as well, which creates problems of its own for Esselman. He keeps a tight guard and Esselman's got to try and find a way past that. Body shots is uh, speciality and he has to really go quite low, but not as low as that. That was too low. Sportingly, Peno continuing rather than making the most of the moment. But there's another couple of solid right hands from Esselman. Yeah, good work now from Esselman, targeting the body. Obviously done his homework. Esselman camp. I know that Peno may be a little bit vulnerable downstairs. There's some good body shots from Esselman in this round. Yeah, just getting the feeling there that Peno in that round, more than in the first two, starting to feel the weight of Esselman's punches. We know the business world is changing. When working turns into co-working. And offices can be everywhere, even here. And the environment jumps to the top of everyone's agenda. So, are you ready to change? The new BMW 5 Series. Esselman's best round of the fight so far. The Nottingham man really starting to get on top there in round three. Yeah, some good body shots towards the end of the round. That was a cracking right hand there from Esselman. Just moves in towards the end of the round. He went well for the body. Just looking for the first time to physically dominate Taino a little in that third round. Taino starting fast though in round four. He'll know his corner will have told him that in all probability he's losing rounds and he needs to reverse that trend. Started the well, uh, round well, though, Kano okay, John on that front foot coming forward. Someone has just got to watch out for those attacks, adjust the feet, and bring him onto the shots. Kano, very experienced, looking to roll his way into range and deliver big hooks, that time just flashing through thin air, but that's the sort of danger shot that Esselman has to be aware of, and another one just around the back of the head. Oh, lovely body oh shot he got there. caught though. Good body shots, but he was caught off balance. Yeah, and did, maybe, yeah. maybe right. it accentuated what damage there was, but Peno certainly caught him with a counter. Good body shot from Esselman. He gets caught. Bob Williams telling Peno for holding on and dragging his man down. Well, Peno has just got a little bit more confidence here in this fourth round, having found the target on more than one occasion and just momentarily seeing Esselman lose his composure when he was clipped by that. I think it was a right-hand counter. Adjusted his feet, just bring his Pino into the shots. I think he's going to get back behind. He's boxing a little bit more here. So when he's landed some good body shots in the previous round, and probably got a little bit too overconfident. Yeah, there's maybe a sense yeah. that he thought he was just starting to unravel a little bit in that last round. And, um, he's closed the gap there probably too often in this round. He's just got cool with the odd shot here, Esselman. Peno clearly having his best round of the fight so far. 
And has regrouped pretty well after a fairly indifferent third. And he's putting a big effort in here in round four. That's a man digging in there, but I think most of those taken on arms and gloves. Oh, that's a good shot, though. Left hand under the elbow. Good round. Back your round. Tight one. And Peno, did he do enough to take it? There's certainly an argument that he could have been given that one, Richie. He could have got it, could have been an even round. It's a close round. I'd probably just go uh, for Peno in that round. Essendon came back well towards the end, but I think Princeton just did enough to win. Super determined. Tell me about that. There's, a, there's where he just got caught off balance with that right hand. It was more he fell over on his own feet. So there's, yeah, there's no real damage done. It's a footwork that let him down. Just lost his balance slide in the um, uh, Essendon. Essendon, who was not quite to. Uh, it's quite uh, taken by that polite apology Peno gave him for failing to make the first date that this fight was mooted. But he told his uh, manager, Jimmy Gill, very nicely said, quite right that he should do that, and I appreciate that I'm still going to beat him up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's the nature of boxing, but you don't, you don't get many apologies from your opponents for pulling out. Fair play to him. <laughs> Again, Peno starting on the front foot, trying to look for some hurtful hooks, but it's better for an Esselman. Good body shots. You give that fourth round to Peno, did you say? I thought he just nicked it, yeah, John. So 3 1 on your card in Esselman's favour. Esselman lands good body shots and then just gets a little bit overconfident and he wants to close that gap down and that just brings, brings Peno into it for me. He's got to just remember about his boxing. He's a good technical boxer, is Echo Esselman. And he's just got to remember that. He's got to keep to his boxing, mix it up a little bit, target the body, yes, but don't neglect that jab and straight right hand. French corner getting very excited by some of the success of their man. Peno's right hand did get through the guard of Esselman as Richie was making that last point, and you heard them bellowing their encouragement. Sometimes judges swayed, maybe, or so people sometimes say, by the reaction of the crowd. Of course, no crowd here tonight, but with that being the case, the cornermen can be heard all the more clearly. Some good work there for Messerman with that jab, a simple jab, simple straight left, accurate. It's set, it's set up all this attack now, previously, two or three real good jabs, and now he's really stepping in there, good right hand, but it's that jab, that straight left that set them up. There's a nice clubbing right hand as well, and just for a moment the spring goes out of Peno's stride. Took some heavy shots there in those exchanges. Good round for Peno, his best so far, round four. As Esselman seems to have dug in here in round five, re-establishing what had seemed to be a clear dominance in the third. Oh, good jab again, straight through the guard and landed flush. And drew blood from the nose of Peno. Bob Williams just reminding Esselman to keep his shots up. Left hand was below the rather high belt of the Frenchman. Actually, it's not his belt, it's his protector, isn't it? The yeah. belt of his shorts is some way below. So round five completed, and Esselman perhaps doing enough to take that one. Yeah, I thought so. Esselman got back on track there. Good round for him. He'll be pleased in that corner. Yeah. Well, she can just about here in the background is Barrington Brown, Esselman's trainer. Barrington was a decent fighter himself. Absolutely. Esselman here on the attack. Good straight right hand there. 
Then switches the attack downstairs. Payno struggling a little bit with that shot. Good work from Esserman. Really went for it here. And here's the scorecard as Richie has it at this point. Halfway stage and a three point advantage for Echo Esama. Moving into round six. Hope you're enjoying the boxing that we're bringing you from our behind closed doors series. That's some terrific scraps. And still more to come here tonight, including that intriguing-looking middleweight fight between Mark Heffron and Denzel Bentley. Both camps really fancying their chances. It's a pick em one according to the bookies. And our main event coming up last of all, Anthony Yard against the Lincolnshire tough man, Dex Spellman. Man, as he just allowed his gloves to fall low. Yeah, that's a good shot, that was John. He yeah. left up there, we spoke about it earlier, didn't we? When he's in close, that's the danger punch. And he landed a cracker there. Hey, no. Didn't hold back with it, does it? The old kitchen sink goes in. <laughs> yeah. A rotation on that shot. But to deliver that, of course, you've got to get up close. Left hook or the right hook. If you're safe, but better throwing it short and mid range. That's where you're going to get your power, but you've got to get into that position. And when he closes the gap down, that's when he's dangerous with that shot. Man with the points advantage, we're fairly sure, but there's more success for Peno. Left hand again. Echo raised a bit of an eyebrow when I suggested to him early this week that he needed to get a move on because he's 31. He said, yeah, I might be 31, but he said, I'm only really 24 in terms of the, the fights I've had. Still fresh, he believes. Yeah, I agree with that. Still plenty left. Good four or five years. Yet, John. Unless, of course, he gets clipped by one of these speculative-looking big hooks that Peno continues to throw. Only sporadic success, but nevertheless showed that he still has danger. It's only occasional big shots. He's not been able to maintain sustained pressure, except when he really manages to narrow the gap and get in close. A good left hook from him in that round. It's a close round. He much prefers when uh, Summon is up close to him. Summon moving his feet in there, that gives him good problems. As we've said at various points, Peno has never been stopped and as the rounds continue to tick away, you begin to wonder if that proud record for the Frenchman is going to continue. Bob Williams reckons there's a bit too much grease around the face of Cedric Peno. Yeah, it's not exactly been put on sparingly. Remove that, monsieur. And now we can continue, mon vieux. <laughs> I'm impressed, John. That's about the extent of it. Don't be too, don't be too impressed. <laughs> Pay now again, 
trying to launch in big shots from range, big swinging hooks like that. But Esuman aware of it and using his footwork to stay away. See, Pena, when he, when he starts those attacks, he's a bit too far out. See, that, there's an example. He's starting the attack too far away, falling short. Um, Esselman can see the attack coming. That's mainly because he's feet are a little bit too slow. What he's got to try and do is try and catch Esselman as he's coming forward and whip the right hand over the top. Esselman then will be closing the gap down himself. And he's got a better chance than of landing that right hand. But when he's launching it from too far out, Esselman sees it coming. Adjusts his feet. It's fairly easy boxing for Esselman. Big, big hook seems to be Payno's stock in trade. We've not seen too many uppercuts. Not too many body shots either. He's really going for broke, head hunting and hoping for one big bingo punch. wanting to make a statement tonight, Esselman, and to send out a message saying that he was ready for the likes of Chris Jenkins and for Connor Ben. He'd want a little bit more than he's shown so far. He'd love to get a stoppage, I'm sure. And to be fair, Peno hasn't looked as though he's been in any sort of real trouble so far. He's most anxious times, maybe, back in that third round and since then he's regrouped and he's still very much still in there yeah he's tough isn't he Peno his feet are all over the place though he keeps crossing his legs and comes square and he's getting away with it Listen, I think again has got to maybe target that body he's working well with the jab to the head and she just switched downstairs maybe with the body shots Last few seconds of a round that Esselman has again picked up by superior boxing Peno. Not much more than those big swinging hooks and certainly not, well not for me anyway, landing enough of them to give him a round. No. No, he's not landed enough for Peno there. Cool and composed, Esselman. His degree, well, he specialised in marketing and media, so you'll probably find out afterwards when he talks to Bunsey, assuming that he gets a win, he's certainly able to express himself very well. You remember that from his time up with the GB people? Yeah, he's a clever lad, he's very well-mannered, a very likeable fella, Dr Esselman. A real gentleman. When you throw a single shot, he counts. Cool, confirms, super fit, says he has no trouble making that welterweight limit. And as you can see, he's quite a big lad, significantly the bigger frame than Cedric Peno. I think what he's got to do, uh, John, a little bit more of it, is, is step on the gas a little bit, you know, go through the gear, because he's a very fit kid, but he's got to be in and out with the feet, so he can't afford to hold his feet. Work at mid and long range, um, in and out with the feet, and just up the tempo, go through the gears, and really test uh, pain out. That's what he's got to do, I think. It's so important that he doesn't hold his feet. He's got to be in and out. Pain out. Like, like throwing shots like that, he needs um, Esselman to be standing in front of him, holding his feet. If he, if Feno's going to land that right hand, Bob Williams, commander French, I suspect, is about as good as mine, and he indicates by sign language as to what he's doing incorrectly, dragging his man down with the arm, and then allowing him, having done that, to throw punches underneath, which of course is illegal. <laughs> See, that's better now for Messerman. I must have heard this, John. Going through the gears there, that's good. Yeah, letting the punches go. But in a 
allowing himself to get inside and work inside, attractive though it is, and a lot more exciting, does that maybe just give Paino a bit more of an opportunity? Yes, it does, Well, that's why I said, John, he's got to be in and out with the feet, so he doesn't hold the feet um, too long. Short bursts of work, then out with the feet, then back in, and up the tempo like that, go through the gears. This is better for Messerman. He's really stepping on the gas now, this is much better. Sustained attack, showing his fitness, trying to work away to the body of the Frenchman, who still is not moved, though. Essaman put quite a lot into that attack, and just taking a maybe just a tiny bit of a breather, having done so. Blood around the right eye of Essuman, but I think it's come from the nose. I think it's just smeared up around his eye. I don't think there's a cut there. Essuman finishing in control as he has been for much of this round. This has been his best round for some time. Eighth round over. And uh, that was a big one for Echo Essaman. Yeah, that was a very dominant round indeed for Essaman. Went through the, those gears, didn't he? Put a lot into that. But there was a one stage, maybe we're going to see it now. There was a really impressive sustained attack to the body. Yeah, kept the guard up well there, blocking that left up, but worked well with his right up to the body. There's the shot there. Actually, that protector's a little bit too high, isn't it? So it's actually blocked the shot, if anything. Protector. But yeah, it was a sustained pressure, sustained attack from Messerman. A little bit ragged himself, put a lot into it, but a good round. Abdom ab abdominal protectors, as they call them, don't they? That's a creative uh, use of the word abdominal. I think it's certainly high. There's how Richie's got it by five points with two rounds remaining. and moving it was a more of a macho approach really taking his man to task with sustained body shots Plano starting quickly though in this ninth still cherishing hope that he's going to find the one big shot he surely needs to put Essaman down at very least if he's going to have a chance of winning this and in all probability he's going to have to stop him if he's going to turn this around yeah he's got a couple of danger punches hasn't he the right hand over the top occasionally but that left hook on the inside as well has been his most dangerous shot but Essaman he's boxing well again here and when Essaman is when he's on target with his jab, then it makes it even more difficult for Payno to land the right hand over the top. As he's thinking about it, there's a jab in his face, sharp and accurate, and Desmond's staying at range as well. It's, it's That's the shot, that left hook. Yeah. That's, that's where he's got to try and... That get him into reverse, and he doesn't throw it, does he? No. You know, he's... Uh, Essaman looking to double up the jab and try and seize the initiative. Control centre ring. That's good. Brought up a right uppercut inside. Pano showing real guts, so. Use of the forearm there from Asaman, just on the blind side, the referee gets away with it. Pano is the type of opponent, John, you, you can't lapse in concentration against him. So quietly spoken and polite and doesn't look like a fighter really when you see him outside outside the ring, but he can see when he gets in there, he is a tough old boy. 34 years old now, older man by three years. Oh, 
lost his last fight, a 10-rounder, against a Belgian back in January of this year. And if this goes the distance, if he can't find some big shot now, surely Essamon is going to register another defeat on that pay-no record. Not been a lot clean landed in that round. Uh, there is a little nick over the right eye of Cedric Paino, but a bit of a blob of grease. Stopping that one. Bob Williams pointing out that the last round is coming up. Needs the word final in there somewhere. At least three words I've got. Exactly. Yeah. Order a couple of beers in France. Well. Really? Say no more, John. Say no more. Well, he's given a big effort to Cedric Peno, but surely Echo Essman after nine completed rounds, is poised for victory. How did he score that ninth? I thought Essamon uh, won it, John, to be quite honest. It was a scrappy one, wasn't it? Yeah. It wasn't, there weren't too many clear, big scoring shots. Moving now into the last round. Richie's got it a clear advantage, as you see there, for Echo Essamon. His debut under the Queensbury banner. The motors hopefully moving him on towards perhaps a British title shot before too long, assuming he gets the points verdict here. Good left up to the body there from Essamon. Just felt it. Okay, no, just moved back a little bit. You can just tell, feeling the effects of it. Oh, nice jab, that's a great jab for this one. Lovely. And again. That's one area in which he is very clearly the superior man in sheer brute strength. Peno right up there with him and no questioning how game this Frenchman is. Oh, he's tough, tough guy, this, this kid is definitely. Tough opponent. Second time Conor Ben fought Peno. He had him down on more than one occasion and boxed his way to a wide points win. Well, you can see if you get your tactics wrong against this fellow, then he's going to be a handful. You've got to box him in a certain way. And that's the good work there from Essamon. In and out with the feet, using his jab, better boxing. You stand and trade and hold your feet against his back, then it really brings him into it. And if you see how he gives uh, good fighters problems, you've got to get your tactics on. It's warm inside your call here tonight. I tell you what, if there are a thousand people in here or more, it really would be warm. Looking for big sustained body attack, Essamon, even at this stage, trying to get those gloves down from Peno to give the opportunity. Peno so tough, and he's not going to be—he's not going to be surrendering that never been stopped little line at this stage, and still looking for one big hook as we move towards the final 10 seconds of the fight. Echoman resigned to the fact that it had to go the distance and an appreciative touch of gloves between the two. But the man from Nottingham must know surely that he's done enough. Yeah, of course, he's, um, he's won it comfortably for me. Um, and, you know, it's a tricky fight, isn't it? He's against a tough opponent. He wanted to, to look really good tonight. Hasn't quite happened, but he's won it comfortably. But he hasn't looked absolutely brilliant, has he, at the end of the day? He's been against a tough opponent. He wanted to get the stoppage. 
And that was always a, a, a tough job to do because this guy has never been stopped. Lovely jab there, worked well in the last round. Did Esselman, went through the gears in certain rounds and tested his opponent to the body. Was finished there with a nice left up to the head. Yeah, overall, I'd be pretty pleased with that display because um, it was against a tough opponent. And like I say, he hasn't looked absolutely outstanding, but he's won it, and he's won it com convincingly for me. Judges' cards being totted up. Michael Alexander, Steve Gray, and Marcus McDonnell. And with the wise man standing or sitting, officiating and scoring this one, and the tally is now being worked out in front of us. Robert Smith, Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, a representative of the IBF down there as well, and Thomas Schreiber patiently waiting for their deliberations as ever wanting to make sure everything is 100 percent right particularly in a title fight ibf european welterweight belt at stake here the vacant title essaman knows that he's done enough though he's a happy man and he's knowing really that this is merely confirmation surely which is going to come you've got it even was it, was it richie nine rounds to one or thereabouts no, i've got 98 93 i have so well it was uh, it was it was a wide wide margin and i think now we have got the we have got it so the two fighters will be brought together center ring by bob williams Thomas Triber is poised, and I think now we can go to our master of ceremonies to find out how this fight has been scored. All yours, Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Steve Gray scores it 100 to 90. Judge Marcus McDonald scores it 98 to 93. And Judge Michael Alexander scores it 98 to 92. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And now the IBF European welterweight champion, Echo the Engine Esuman. The engine kept ticking for 10 rounds and drove him to an emphatic victory. Eku Esseman's undefeated record extended now to 40. OK, so it wasn't perfect, David, but it has to be seen as his best so far, surely. And hopefully still there is more to come because... As